Hi, this is Kishar Ramaswamy, Application Engineer with Optus North America. Today I'll be showing part two of a six-part series on tips and tricks in SPIOS. I hope that you find it useful, and as always, don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. The second tip that we'll talk about today um, uses uh, an Optum One module. So this is a, an option that can be added onto your license. And Essentially, it's used for calculating uh, pass-fail criteria of different metrics and also running uh, what we call design tables for optimization through iteration, essentially. So this particular option is called the Simulation Wizard, and uh, it enables three discrete functionalities. So the first is that you can add uh, rules and regulations into an XMP result. So when you're looking at the measurement points of a particular result. You can have pass-fail criteria for each measurement zone so that you can quickly uh, look at your result and see if you're meeting the requirements either of a particular standard, so an SAE or ECE standard, for example, or whether you need to meet uh, your customer's requirements, which could be more strict than the actual um, regulation. So we can program in our own formulas for all of the measurement areas and quickly assess if we're passing or failing. It also allows us to use, um, in Katia it's called design tables, but in the other CAD platforms, um, there, there's another name for the, same, for the same function, which essentially allows us to iterate through different configurations, such as changing uh, the length of a certain parameter or changing a material that's applied to a, a geometry, and essentially automatically run through each of these simulations and output the corresponding value for that configuration. And third, uh, we can create automation macros. So this is used for um, automating some potentially repetitive tasks, such as going through maybe a hundred, hundreds of results and exporting an image for each one. Doing this manually would take a uh, significant amount of time, but if we create a, a macro that can do this for us, then we let you know, the software do the work instead of having to do it ourselves. So these are the three functions that this Optum One option uh, can provide you. The ones I'm going to focus on for today are the first two, so the adding the rules and regulations and using design tables. Um, it may be something that you've used in the past, but maybe are not fully aware of everything that they can do for you. So by default, when a simulation is run, the result that's generated will not have any specific measurement points created. It will just have a, a default uh, area one rectangle that's created. And you would have to essentially create all of these measurement areas yourself to define or, or to measure different spots in the result. So what we can do, first of all, is we can download um, specific standards from the library on the Optus portal and import these into the result. So the standards that are available uh, on the portal typically are uh, SAE or ECE or uh, FMVSS, these types of regulations that are very commonly used, um, especially in the automotive industry. The standard can be either imported into one specific result or it can be added directly into the sensor. So on the right, there's a little field that you can see for the XMP template the standard can actually be input directly into the sensor so that every time a specific simulation is run using that sensor, it will automatically have all of the measurement points created for you and all of the rules of that standard included. So if we go back to that same intensity sensor result, in this case with a template loaded in to check, uh, in this case we have a low beam uh, headlamp, and we're checking whether it's passing, uh, I think this is a, an SAE regulation, by loading in this template that was downloaded from the Optus portal, you can see not only all of the measurement points that are appearing, so in the, in the actual XMP result, you can see a bunch of small ellipses or lines. So this is a, a template that created all of these measurement points, but on top of that, you can also see the rule for each particular measurement point, so whether it's below or above a certain value, and a color for whether it's passing or failing that particular uh, rule. So green indicates that you're passing and red indicates that you're failing. So 
So this allows you to very quickly look at a simulation result and assess whether you're passing all of the criteria that you need to pass or whether there's a few that are failing. This uses a uh, built-in template where all of these points are created for you, but it's also just as easy to create measurement areas wherever you need them to be and set the rules yourself so that you can pass maybe a customer's requirements which are potentially more strict than a particular standard. Another thing that you can do, which um, I don't think is, is very well uh, utilized, is create what we call global rules. So this allows you to actually input equations into the XMP measurement window uh, to, to calculate formulas that you might have to uh, do, let's say, in Excel. So a typical process could be where you take all the data from the measurements window, bring it into Excel, and then create some equations in Excel. But you can actually do all of this directly inside of the measurements window, where in this case, for example, we're looking at uh, the uniformity of a certain result. So we're taking the minimum value, the maximum value, and the average value across the entire, the entire range. And we're calculating the uniformity based on uh, a formula that, that can be input into the target column. So in this case, you see the formula uh, is, there's two formulas, one which is doing the maximum value minus the average value divided by the average, and the second is doing the average value minus the minimum value uh, divided by the average. And this can be in increased to have as many formulas as necessary uh, in, in this window. These formulas can also be exported into a template that could be shared with other users or could be, uh, as I mentioned, put into the sensor so that they're used on every simulation iteration. The second thing that we can do with uh, this Optum One option is creating these uh, iteration tables where we, uh, we essentially predefine many different configurations and we tell the simulation, we tell the software to run one by one through each of these configurations and uh, provide an output result for each, for each iteration. So this is called something different depending on which CAD software you're using. Uh, in Katia, we call these design tables. In NX, uh, it's known as part families. In Creo, it's called family tables. And in SolidWorks, it's, it's a little bit different um, and it uses something called tolerancing inside of SolidWorks. But the idea is the same for each one. We're essentially creating a predefined list of configurations that we want to test and instead of having to run them one by one manually, we input the entire list into the simulation and tell it to run through each configuration um, one after the other and provide all of the outputs for us. So in terms of what can be varied in these configurations, we can use any CAD mechanical variable, so the length or the radius or the size of a particular surface. We can use any Optus variable, so in this case, we're talking about maybe the source distribution, the flux of a certain source, um, the spectrum, any of these SPIOS variables. Or, and I think this is an important one as well, uh, material files can also be varied. So we can look at different grains of textures. Uh, we can look at different types of materials and, and again, iterate through each one of these. And from this, two things will be created. Um, we'll have not only the actual XMP result from each iteration, but we'll also have an HTML report which will provide the output value from each one of these iterations. So we won't necessarily have to go through each result and open them one by one. We can have a report which gives us the values from each of these iterations in one uh, large table. So you can see that here. Uh, essentially, I ran through about 12 iterations, changing a texture that was applied to a certain surface. And from this, I have a contrast, so essentially a uniformity measure that was created. And you can see the result of this contrast measure in the measure column on the right. And it provides you the particular output value for each iteration in a, in a very easy to see way. And so you can look at this and determine from these 12 iterations which one was the best choice. In this case, I just have one measurement, but you could have many measurements created, and you'd be looking at the output from each one of these measurements. So for this, I was going to show it um, 
inside of the software really quick. So let's see if I can minimize this. So I have a, a simple um, example created um, of a, in this case, a light guide with two sources that are inputting and a, a output uh, after this uh, kind of triangular button here. And so what I created as a uh, design table in this case was I have a property applied to this triangular output face. So in this case, it's a grain, uh, this VDI grain that was applied to this triangular face. And so what I want to do is actually change the level of this grain uh, to test what, what level is, is the best for this particular application. So what I've created is a design table. This design table has <coughs> 12 entries, and each entry we're essentially changing the material file that is linked with this face optical property. So right now you can see it's set at the last one, so VDI number 45, but each iteration of this design table, we change the path to the material file that's being used in the simulation so that it goes through these 12 different levels of grain uh, and does a simulation on each grain. And then that result that we saw previously was an output of each one of these simulation results. So that simulation, and again, this is uh, in the CATIA version. Uh, the others are a little bit different, but essentially the, the idea is the same. That design table is added in to the simulation. So there's a design table field when you're running a simulation you can input the design table that was created. And when you run a simulation using uh, this sort of a design table, the output that you get is uh, essentially one simulation result per entry of the design table that's being run. So in this case, I have one all the way through 12. So I could open each one of these results individually and look at the simulation results, but I could also open the overall report. And inside of here, is where you have those 12 measurement values that are being reported. So this allows you to quickly look at all of the outputs and see which one would be the best one. So this example was changing the path to a material file, but as I mentioned, you could change really any parameter that exists inside of CAD, so a mechanical parameter or a CEOs parameter or a material file. 